Welcome to Upstart Press. In this tutorial, we are building a custom video player in React.js. This React.js project can be a nice addition to your portfolio. The interface looks like this. We have play pause button, stop button, seek bar or progress bar, volume control slider and a toggle full screen button. The video supports thumbnail as well. Welcome to Upstart Press. Toggle glass in React.js is straightforward. Zero to one for third button, change it to two. So the structure is not even. We want to apply active class to the button was clicked and previous. So this is what we are going to build. Get React.js boilerplate code. Install React icons. We are going to need it for buttons. npm i react icons. This is some basic CSS for small styling tweaks in the player. Video wrapper width and margins. Video player width. Button margin and line height, button hover, background color change, and if the screen width will be equal to 767 pixels or less than that, video player width will be changed to 100% and height auto. This is for responsiveness. And inside assets directory, I have a directory called video1 containing thumbnail image and video file. Create a folder called components. Inside it, create a new file called videoplayer.jsx. Create a function that takes two props, src and thumbnail. Import this function in main file. Import video player from components video player. Also import video file and thumbnail image from assets directory. Use video player component and pass video and thumbnail as prop values. So this value and this value will be passed to this component as src and thumbnail. Props are SRC and thumbnail, values are my video and video thumb. Our work in this file is done. Video player component is attached here that is receiving video and thumbnail. All further processing will be in child component that is video player component. In this component, import hooks from react to manage state effect and object reference. Import icons from React icons. Declare state using use state hook and reference using use ref hook. Is playing, is full screen, and is muted. Have Boolean values. These will be true or false. Other pieces of state will use different values. Use native controls state will also be true or false. This is a Boolean expression that checks if the window's inner width is less than 767 pixels. If it is, use native controls will be set to true, otherwise it will be false. Basically, we are checking windows inner width. It will help make video player responsive. So if windows inner width will be less than 767 pixels, native controls will be displayed for the player. I'll get back to these in a minute. Inside return, use video tag. That will have these attributes. And after that, this check. In React, ref is a special attribute that can be attached to any component and is used for accessing the underlying DOM element directly. This is useful for reading values out of the DOM and for imperative operations like focusing a field, playing a video, etc. Ref, video ref is a direct reference to the video DOM element. It will allow us to control the video's playback 
access its crunch time and more. And it will allow us to do that directly in JavaScript code without relying on the component's state or props. useRef is a hook that can hold a mutable value in its dot current property. So we can use video ref dot current when we use this use ref. So this piece of state initializes a ref object with null value. This object is then mutated to point to the video DOM element once the component mounts, thanks to ref attribute. The value of video ref dot current will be the actual DOM node of the video element, allowing direct access to its properties and methods like play, stop, if available. This piece of state is creating another ref using use ref. It is being used to keep a reference to an interval that we will create with the set interval. Since use ref returns a mutable ref object, the dot current property of interval ref can be assigned to the ID of an interval. This is useful for keeping a reference that can be accessed and cleared later. For example, to stop a repeating action started by a set interval. SRC is the video file that is being passed as prop to this component. Thumbnail is also being passed. Now on click of video, we want the video to play or pause. To implement that, we are calling a function called toggle play pause. We will create this function in a minute. If the video is playing or being paused, we want to do something. And for that, two more functions are being called here. Start progress loop and stop progress loop. Then we have video controls. Use native controls if this expression is true, like if screen width is less than 767 pixels. Otherwise, if use native state is false, use this function to render custom controls that we will build in a minute. We have function calls. Now we will implement the logic. Use use effect and handle responsiveness if window is resized. Handle resize function has the logic such that if window inner width is less than 767, the expression will be true. In that case, set use native controls to true. In this case, native video controls will be displayed. So basically on window resize, this state will be changed to true or false. If window inner width will be less than 767, native controls will be used. Otherwise, our custom controls for video player will be displayed. And this is the resize event listener that is being added to window object and that is calling this function handle resize. And here we are removing this event listener if the component unmounts. This function is calculating the current playback progress of the video as a percentage and updating a corresponding state variable with this value. It will be used in progress bar that will visually represent how much of the video has been played. Start progress loop. This function first clears existing interval. Then it sets up a new interval. This function is ensuring that the video's playback progress is checked and updated every second, providing a consistent representation of how much of the video has been played. Stop progress loop. This is the function that we used in video attribute on pause. It clears existing interval. So if the video is paused, clear the interval. Toggle play pause. So on click of video, toggle video playback. If video is paused, video ref dot current play and set the state of is playing accordingly and start progress loop as well. Else pause the video, set is playing to false and stop progress loop. Is playing is this state. This is event listener on the video to check if video has been ended playing. Const video, video ref dot current. Here we are adding event listener ended and firing this function handle video end. So if the video ends, is playing will be set to false, progress will set to zero, and progress loop will be stopped. 
So interval that was started will be cleared. And here we are removing event listener when component is removed from DOM. Now let's build custom controls and buttons for the video. Render custom controls. This is the function render custom controls used here. If native controls are not being used, this function will be used and our custom controls will be displayed. We have used buttons here with on click handler functions. Inside buttons, we have used icons. Icons will be changed when needed based on current state. State is being changed by other functions as needed in this component. For example, this button is triggering this function toggle play pause. Based on is playing state true or false, pause or play icons will be displayed. This check is being implemented by using ternary operator. We have created this function already and that function is affecting is playing state as well. Then we have a button that is firing a function stop video on click event. Then we have video seek bar input control. This is input range slider value progress is coming from state. On change, it is also calling a function handle seek. Then we have mute button that calls a function toggle mute and based on is muted state, it changes icons. Then we have volume change control that is also an input range slider. It's calling a function that will control the volume. Handle volume change. Volume value will come from state as well. Finally, full screen button that is calling a function toggle full screen that will affect the state is full screen. And based on value in the state, we are toggling the icon here. So this is our custom control containing several buttons. If native controls are not being displayed, this will be displayed. Now our custom control introduced few more functions. So let's build those functions. Stop video. This function will pause the video. It will reset current time for video playback and change is playing state from true to false. Then we have handle C. This function is receiving value from range slider. Handle seek on change handle seek. Event event target value. When a user seeks to a different time in the video, this function updates the video's current playback time and the progress state. Event dot target dot value is a value between 0 to 100 representing the percentage of the video's duration to which the user wants to seek. This percentage is then converted into the actual time in seconds by multiplying it with the total duration of the video. Then we set the current time property of the video element referenced by video ref dot current to the calculated seek to value. Updating current time moves the playback position of the video to the new time. Then we set the progress in this state as well. Toggle mute. This is kind of self explanatory. We are accessing current volume level of the video. If it is greater than zero, we are setting volume state to zero and is muted state to true and toggling again will turn the volume back on and change states accordingly. Handle volume change. This is also self-explanatory. The function gets the event target value for volume and sets the new volume value for the video and changes the state accordingly. Here set is muted has got an expression that will be true if volume becomes zero. Otherwise, is muted will remain false. Toggle full screen. Toggle full screen function. If full screen state is false, full screen is requested and state is changed accordingly. 
Full screen request is cross browser compatible here. Function calls different methods for requesting full screen depending on the browser. So here video ref dot current dot request full screen for Mozilla it will change to dot moz request full screen for Safari or Opera it will change to dot webkit request full screen and for IE or Edge it will be dot ms request full screen. Else, exiting full screen methods are these, and these are also cross browser. At the end, we are toggling full screen state Boolean value. And here, there are a couple of more checks to make video player smooth. We have added escape key support to exit full screen. And here, at the end, we are clearing event listeners. And here is our player. Welcome to WebStyle Plus. Toggle class in React.js is straightforward. You can use then apply active class. Other right now state is showing null. If we click add this button, out it becomes one. If we click add contact, it becomes two. Now we can apply a check on each button according to the index of the button. Like for the buttons we'll have to apply the class. Welcome to WebStyle Plus. Toggle class in React index on color. Class name active button. Ternary operator to check if the active button has got zero value. Then apply active class. And for on click event handler, pass zero value as index. For second button, Okay, that's that for the video player. It looked small before I started this project, but it has some tricky controls and details to handle to make it perfect. But we have done it. All right, to support WebStyle Plus, check our Patreon and store. Links in the video description. Okay, I hope it helped. Like, share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.